this video. We will be covering how to get the data out of the Cognex camera and into the robot so that we can do vision guided robotic activities. This is targeted towards Tech 3822 and 4474 at the University of Memphis. However, hopefully it'll be of use to others as well. So the general process that occurs, you will program the Cognex camera to export the data to the PLC. There are other videos available on my site and around uh, YouTube that talk about how to do that. So I'm not gonna cover that here. After the Cognex camera is programmed, you will need to program the PLC or get someone to program it for you. You will need to configure the robot input groups. This has to be done at the management security level. You will then need to program your robot to do a couple of different processes, which we will go over. You will then need to trigger the Cognex from the robot via the PLC. The captured data from the camera via the PLC will need to be processed by the robot job using the DIN instruction. We will then need to move the captured data into a position variable in the robot. We will then need to execute the shift on instruction as well as its companion shift off. So not trying to go into all of the details on how to configure and use the robot. Uh, that's, that's really outside the scope of this video, which is intended to be reasonably short. Uh, you can see on my teach pendant screen on the left side, I have a job. On the upper right is the position variable values that are currently in the robot. And in the lower right is the user group input setting configuration. And so the way you get to this on the main menu on the left, you will select IO and arrow across until you get to user group input and you can hit display. It'll show two options. I'm not going to show it on the screen here, but display has monitor and setting. You will need to change it to setting and then you can come down and as you see on the screen here, configure your robot. So this is how it has to be done for our robots in the lab. We are going to use input group one that starts at input number 17, has a length of 32. Input group two will start at input 81 with a length of 32. And input group three will start at input number 113 and uh, be 32 bits long. Once you've done that, you can then flip back to the display mode this will take place immediately we're not going to do parity or anything else and so when you flip back over if there's data already coming from the plc and for the screen capture there is you will see values in the different input groups and you'll notice that the value is negative 2677 here but ultimately I really want negative 2.667. And so there is some math that has to go on in the PLC that takes the data out of the camera, multiplies the offset value, in this case our, our X shift by a thousand so that when we try to transfer it over to the robot, it comes in as this uh, thousands value but when we move it up to the position variable, because this is going through a, uh, a double uh, integer type value in the robot, it will actually know to divide it by a thousand automatically. So on the left side of our screen, we can see that I've done some stuff and ignore the top part for the moment. Um, starting at line four, you'll notice the DN and instead of going to a byte or an integer, we are going to a double. And we are pulling it from input group one in this case. And then we're using the set E instruction, which allows us to set an element. And we're using position variable P000 in our case. And we are writing the value to element number one. And we're pulling it out of D001 from line four. That will give us our X offset. We can do the same thing again, lines six and seven to pull in our next uh, value, which is our Y offset, in which case, as you can see up over here is negative 8.636. And it's coming in from the PLC as 8,636. 
where you're putting that into the Y because remember that the way that the the array or the, the position variable is set up functionally we have X, Y, Z rotate around X, rotate around Y, rotate around Z and element wise they are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 and so for lines 8 and 9 you can see our instructions are D in to capture the information we're putting it in D003 from input group 3 but this time we are doing our set E into element 6 from D003. All right, so that is the logic that has to be in the robot every time we want to pull information from the camera. There are other ways to do this. This seems to be a reasonably easy way to deal with it. As we look at our overall job in the robot, we have moving to a, a position we are pulsing our output for 0 0.025 seconds. It does not need to be a long pulse. The PLC, the camera is able to pick up that pulse fairly quickly. We then go and wait for the camera to have time to process the image and send it back to the robot. Now you will want to play a little bit with this time. Obviously this can be as long as you want or as short as you want as long as it's giving the camera enough time to process the image and you have enough time for the PLC to then transmit that, that back to the robot. I would guess at maybe 100 milliseconds uh, for the general processing and capture, but, but you will want to make sure that the the, the camera is processing fast enough. The more complicated, more complex your vision job is, the longer that will take. It may need to be longer than a quarter of a second, but you may be able to get it down below uh, 0.1 seconds as well. Then we're doing the DNs that we talked about and the, and the moves into our position variable. And then at line 10, we turn on the shift. We are using the P000 position variable that we've been loading with information. In line 11, we move to that position that has been command position that has been previously taught but with the shift enabled and then in line 12 we turn that shift back off and so I only want it on long enough to, to move to the shifted position and so that is the extent of what someone who is just worrying about the robot and the machine vision needs to worry about in the PLC what is happening is that we are also doing this multiplication that I mentioned earlier. I have previously in my ladder logic moved the information from the camera into X offset as my variable. I am multiplying that by a thousand and then I am pushing it into the adjusted tag. This has been cheated a little bit and photoshopped a little bit here in this slide. Uh, the reason adjusted looks like I misspelled it is because the way the PLC works and as fast as it works uh, you only ever see this last example here where 759 and what I wanted to show here was that you would do the adjusted it would get the negative integer value without any decimal places um, and then you need to copy that to the robot output and you have to do this length of four because you are converting a 32-bit uh, value, uh, which is what adjusted is, it's a, it's a deint, and you're placing it into four essence. So there's X, there's Y, and there's my rotation or my angle. Some other things you need to be aware of on the PLC side is that trigger enable has to be set to one. If you forget to set that to one, you will not be able to trigger the camera remotely. And then what you're actually triggering is here. I have been setting things up so that the buffer results enable is off. Uh, ran into some problems at one point with that where it was enabled and the camera was buffering all my results. I wasn't able to see a change in the results, which was somewhat irritating. And then we're gonna, because we're using buffer results enable off, we have to worry about the inspection results acknowledge. And so, what happens in our job 
is when our results are valid and our inspection results are not acknowledged. I need to acknowledge it. I need to disable my trigger, ignore the looping for now, and then I can do my transfer of data across. And where I am getting that from is the input inspection results. And remember that the results will come into the PLC in whatever order I push them out of the camera in, which is why it's important, at least for in class and the classes that we're doing that this video is specifically targeted towards, uh, the results are X, Y, and rotation. If you're doing something else, if you don't want rotation, if you're doing this for something other than my, my classes, as long as you know what the results sequence is, you can write them and use them however you need to. And then what we're doing, you'll notice here, like I said, these are coming in as deints because of the way the systems are designed. That's fine. When I take that deint value and plug it into a reel or copy it into a reel, uh, what will happen is it converts it back to a real number. And then the robot output that we were looking at a little while ago where I do this copy instruction from adjusted into the robot data zero in this case is writing these four fields on the robot's connection. Then I'm doing the next four, and then I'm doing the next four. Now, because of how the robot is set up, uh, there is some jumping around that has to happen. And so for the PLC side, it is imperative that you write to data element zero for four, four essence, the next time you do it is to 13. And so we're not actually using these, even though it looks like there is stuff there. We are actually jumping down to here and writing that. And then for 17, we are writing here. And so hopefully that makes sense. And so what happens is when those values come across, when they're mapped to the user group inputs, we end up with the correct values here, which ultimately through the job will give us the correct values up here. Hopefully this has made sense. Feel free to reach out if you have questions. Thanks for watching.